Let's now look at an example for calling the sign-in API uh, for the email password recipe. Um, even though I'm focusing on email password here, the flow is very similar for the recipes as well. So um, if this is if 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 you understand this, um, you know the other recipe should be clear as well. So we start with the user clicking on um, the login button on the front end, and we have the back end, which is your API layer. Uh, we have the core, and we have the database. Now the user clicks on the sign in button uh, with you know the email and password. Uh, inside the input, uh, inside the form, um, those go to the backend slash auth slash sign in API. So we have the uh, email and password as uh, JSON um, post body. The first thing this API does is it validates um, and normalizes. So validation. So when I say validation, I mean syntax validation and normalization. Of the of the input, um, this then calls um, the core. So we call slash recipe slash sign in API um, of the core, and um, with, with the email and password. Um, and the core then um, queries the database to check um, to fetch uh, to fetch the Password, password hash associated with the email um, and verifies the hash. So verifies password hash with the input input. So if this succeeds, uh, it will return uh, an okay reply with the uh, user ID and other information of the user. Um, else it'll return a reply saying wrong credentials. Um, when the backend API gets a reply from the core, if the API if the reply is wrong credentials, uh, it will send it will relay that to the front end, and the front end can then show the appropriate message to the user. Um, on the other hand, if the core reply is okay, um, the backend now has the user ID um, of the user that just signed in, so it's going to use that to sort of query like create a session. Now the session creation part will require the backend to call the core again uh, in the recipe session uh, post request, uh, and this takes the user ID of um, the user. Um, this then creates, uh, you know, an access token and refresh token, stores the refresh token hash in the database, and um, access token plus refresh token and sends those to the backend. Um, after receiving them, the backend API will attach these to the cookies uh, of the response and send those to the front end along with the user information. So we're sending the access token plus the refresh token as cookies in the response. And these cookies are attached to the backend API domain. So um, if this is api.example.com, uh, these cookies are attached to api.example.com. Um, using these tokens, um, the front end can now make requests to um, your application's APIs uh, using the access token, um, and your API can go about verifying the access token using RSDK uh, and you know knowing which user is logged in. Um, so one advantage of this approach is that this is essentially one API call um, from the backend SDK, which is the slash auth slash sign in API. And a lot of the steps here, like for example, the validation, normalization, um, you know, the step between um, checking the credentials and creating the session, um, and even um, post post API uh, logic, all of these things um, can, like you can change the logic for all of these things uh, within your backend API itself. Um, and, and this makes it very easy and powerful to customize how 
um, this API should behave. So for example, if you want to restrict um, your users to only be logged in um, put like to one device, um, you can inject logic over here. So after you get the OK reply for sign in, and before you create a new session, you can inject um, some logic here, which will check the number of sessions um, for this user ID. So here you can inject custom logic, uh, which will check the number of sessions that exist for this user ID. If the number of sessions is all is greater than one, so greater than zero, um, you just reject uh, you just reject the flow and and send a reply to the front end, um, you know, saying that sign in was unsuccessful. Um, so this makes it very easy to customize auth logic as per your business requirements. Um, in the next section, we can see how um, we can use the access token and the refresh token to maintain a session, um, and how the sign out API will work. Thanks.